You're listening to the Orange Power Podcast, a product of Oklahoma State Athletics. Here are your hosts, Jessica Mori and the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Hunziker. Welcome as we get ready for the Big 12 Conference opener with Kansas State and Coach Gundy. First, it's been an interesting three games to start the season. Probably maybe one of the more interesting starts that you can remember, especially given that you're undefeated. It is, and it, and it seems like uh, this has been a trend for us the last few years uh, versus last year was different than the year before. And then now with winning three close games, um, our defense with their back to the wall making plays, um, playing really good on special teams, and then offensively just trying to overcome an odd year from an injury standpoint. Again, second yeah. year in a row for us in that area. Um, we won on defense and special teams, which is okay. We, we kind of learning to play together as a team. And it's, uh, it's interesting that the team we're playing this week um, is playing really good special teams like they always do and is playing really good defense like we are. So it'll be an interesting matchup. You mentioned and you have mentioned the fact that you added, I believe, three more scholarships to the defensive side a few years ago. Was part of your decision-making in that seeing what was happening with opposing defenses, preventing the big plays, and, and maybe understanding you would have to win more games on defense? Is that what led you down that path? Both of those things are correct, and special teams. Yeah, oh yeah. So your, your extra scholarships on that side of the ball – three of those four positions are going to help you in special teams. You have about 75% of your special teams players are defense. You get some wide outs and some running backs and, and cowboy backs, but your offensive line, your quarterbacks aren't helping you on special teams. So the special teams that the defensive guys can provide was one reason. And then also this league was getting beat up so bad defensively that – you can sit around and complain about it, or you can say, let's come up with some plan and try to do something to make it better. And that was the best solution that I could come up with, was let's add more numbers over there, which is going to affect your offensive output. There's no question. Sure. And Casey Dunn and those guys, you know, they'd love to have their four scholarships back. But by putting them over there, offense has to do with uh, without – the guys that they've had in the past, and then defensively it should beef us up and help us on special teams, which so far has worked. A bit hidden in this three-game start is the fact that those additional numbers on defense have most certainly helped you because you've had injuries on the defensive side, but you've had quality depth to take care of it. Despite some of the injuries on the defensive line, you've shuttled in a host of different guys who have made plays in the first three games. No question. Uh, we, we've had... We've gone into games and had two or three D linemen out, but you don't really notice it because we roll so many guys in and we have that depth. Same things happened uh, with us at the safety position. We've had a, a guy or something that missed some plays, and Trey Sterling's not there, so we have another, other guys that can go in. And the depth is just very important. And uh, I know there's all given, there's always give and take, and I know that offensively it's a it's difficult, but I'm fairly sure that that we made the right decision. Where do you see the offense continuing to improve? What will it well, look we, like? We, we did a good job of run blocking last week. You know, I used the term that in the first two games, we got a few yards and they really weren't schemed up and locked up effectively. In this last game, we had the six guys on defense that we were trying to block blocked and allowed our back to get through the line of scrimmage without being touched. They could make cuts. We know how all that works. So as we continue to improve and the teams we're playing will be more physical up front, that'll be the challenge. It's just difficult. I don't care what offense you're in. If you can't run the ball effectively at times to offset and keep the pass defenders um, out of your run game, then it's hard to move the ball. And so by rushing the ball effectively, it's going to force those pass defenders to come down and help in the run game. Now that allows you to throw a few passes. But if we just let them set back, whoever it is, and play pass, and the six guys up front on defense can stop us running the ball, we're in for a long night. You know, it's interesting. You think back to the Boise game from their perspective. So 
you're rushing the ball very effectively and hitting some home runs, which you did with Jalen Warren. They can't rush the football. And one thing that you've talked about that helps you close football games is a huge piece is being able to rush the ball. The fact that your defense shut down their run all night played a huge role in how that last drive for them played out, which eventually led to the block field goal. And when, you know, to, to be fair to them, if you just put yourself in, in their defenses, defensive coordinators' shoes, when we went into that game, they didn't really think we could do anything. Yeah. Because we hadn't run the ball any good, and we were down injury-wise so much at wide out. I don't think they were real concerned about a running game. Now, I don't know. I'm not in their camp. I'm just saying that I wouldn't have been. Yeah. There wouldn't be anything on tape that show me that would be concerned. So we, we caught them off guard a little bit, I think, and then uh, we were much better blocking them up. This Kansas State game will be a really good barometer for kind of where we're at now rushing the ball. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned this when we were doing another interview this week, but it warrants mentioning again. I don't know that people have a true perspective, do they, And as far as how much Jalen Warren has improved since he got here. Sure. Yeah, when he came in, we really liked him. Uh, himself, his friends, his former coaches have made comments after the Boise game and the fact that how much he's improved his speed. He's always been a physical runner, but his agility and side-to-side -side movement and his speed – has gotten considerably better during his time here, and that's a tribute to Rob Glass in our strength and conditioning. So I'm not saying that they don't do a good job at right. Utah State. Right. I'm just saying that I know that Rob's ability to enhance our players' strength and speed is through the roof. And Jalen is a great example of that by uh, what he showed in the last game. Now, I mean, how fast is Boise in the secondary compared to how fast these Big 12 teams are? I don't know. We'll find out, but I know that he still got in the open and took off and ran, and DBs had angles on him, and he ran away from him, and, and that was a pretty impressive part of his game at Boise. As much as you've emphasized the run, Kansas State emphasizes it even more. So what are the keys to, to stopping them, in particular the run game? Well, they're option football. They've done it for years. Uh, their quarterbacks run, so they have different blocking schemes where the quarterback can pull the ball and keep it. That's why I call it option football. And then off-option football, it's play action, try to get um, receivers running down the middle of the field uh, where you turn them loose because guys that are supposed to be playing pass are looking at the option. And then we have to contain the, the quarterback. They hurt us really bad last year on nakeds and boots and got outside, and we didn't do a good job of covering the over routes. I can't imagine they'll do anything other than start with that this year. And their quarterback, Power Reed, they hurt us on last year several plays. In fact, one of them I think went 60 or 70. So – that's where we have to start defensively. As far as their defense is concerned, it's a complete change, is it not? I mean, they've totally changed, right? Three down. They've gone to what the trend is, three down. Two inside backers, three de defensive linemen. Uh, different things in the secondary, which are common with that look. They can, they can play some cover three. They can play some three buzz, as we call it. They can play cover four, which is everybody dropping back. They have the capability of playing some cover two, like – Iowa State does a lot of. So it, it's, we've seen it. Uh, my guess is they'll, they'll have safeties down trying to stop the running game. And we'll have to find ways to attack them in that area and then throw passes. When we come back, Jessica Morey has a conversation with two of the heroes from the Boise State win, Jason Taylor II and Kale Cabanis. Stay with us. It's time for Ask the Coach, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, Coach Gundy, this is Blair. You have to take an assistant coach to the wilderness for a week. Which assistant coach do you take and why? Hmm, that's a tough one. I've been fortunate to have really good coaches. I would say from an entertainment standpoint, because I've had so many good coaches, I couldn't just pick one from X's and O's. I would have to be dropped there with Todd Munkin. That way we'd forget we were on a deserted island with his entertainment. When we made the decision that we were going to build the Durant Solar Farm, we had the idea of an anchor tenant, and the first one that we thought about was the Choctaw Nation. It was a perfect fit for us whenever og &E approached us 
about this relationship and this idea. They reflect a lot of our same values. They're about growth of our communities. They're about growth of our state. They're trying to help us preserve Oklahoma, our heritage here in the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Remember that mammogram you postponed? The colonoscopy? Your yearly physical? Now's the time to get it done. Mercy is ready with COVID-19 safety precautions in place at all hospitals and clinics. So let's take care of that achy hip. The follow-up with your specialist. Plan for your safe visit at mercy.net slash your safety. Go to mercy.net slash your safety. At Mercy, your life is our life's work. Welcome back to the Orange Power Podcast. I am joined by two very special guests this week, uh, the stars of the game against Boise State, Jason Taylor II and Kale Cavanis. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me today. Let's dive into the Boise State game. First things first, let's talk about the blocked field goal. What was going through your mind when you reached up to block that field goal? Um, not too much was going through my mind. I was just like... It's on the line. Let's, let's sell out and try to make a play. And were you saying that you had seen that he had been kicking low? Yeah, uh, earlier in the game, he was kicking some PATs. And I was surprised. I was like, I might have could have blocked that one. So during the end of the game, I was like, okay, let's, let's test it. Let's try to get it. What, um, when you actually made contact, like what was – were you, did you turn around immediately and be like, okay, did I affect it? Or, like, did he still make it? Or, like, what was what was that next, like, 10, 15 seconds like? Oh, I immediately turned around. <laughs> I immediately, I was like, because it hit my hand hard. So I was like, did it even affect it at all? So that's what I did. I turned around and I was like, as soon as I saw, it was probably, like, maybe 15 yards away from me. It didn't, I don't think it made it that far. So I was, like, excited. And what what was your reaction from the teammates? What was it like getting to celebrate with them once they realized that you had gotten a hand on it? Uh, I, I don't think a lot of people knew I got a hand on it at first. And even if you watch it real time, you can't really tell. It looked like maybe he uh, just kicked it that way. So I think later, I think Coach Gunner, he came to me after everything. It was like, I didn't even know you blocked it. And so that was fun. Yeah, what was it like when he came up and, and it was hyped for you? Uh, you know, he is. <laughs> <laughs> he as hyped as he's going to get, you know. <laughs> um, did your hand hurt after? Yes, my hand was hurting. <laughs> it felt like I was in a cold game. And my hand went numb or something. <laughs> was it worth it, though? It was. <laughs> and you're just around for big plays. I mean, it's just crazy how you're there right when the team needs you to be there. You had that onside kick recover for a touchdown um, against Texas Tech, and then you had that fumble recovery touchdown against Kansas State. Um, you almost had one uh, against Tulsa, a pick six, but unfortunately that one was called back. Um, but I'm just how – what's it like? just being there for those big plays and knowing that you can make those plays? Um, I don't I don't really know. I, I just kind of like play football, try to make plays, try to be the best I can be for the team. I mean, I don't really put too much thought into it. I try to just play the flow of the game, not try to get too worried about, you know, the X's and O's, the, the exact things you're supposed to do, and just play football like I'm in the backyard. And that's what I always say. That's awesome, though. That's, um, you know, a great mentality to have. And when you sit back and you kind of think about those big plays, though, that you're a part of, of things, like, how does that make you feel that, you know, you've been able to affect these games? Not single-handedly, obviously, it's the team wins, but, you know, that you had the play that changed the game. Uh, it feels good, you know. I, I'm just happy to get a win. That's what I, that's what I want. I want to win a Big 12 championship, you know. I've been watching Oklahoma State my whole life, so – that's a dream and goal of mine, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, um, you know, speaking of big plays, we've got Kale Cavanis, who made uh, another huge play in the game against Boise State. Um, you had your first career catch, and it just, you know, happened to be, you know, a catch that sealed the game for, <laughs> for Oklahoma State. Um, but what was going through your mind when you got in and then when you were made that, when they threw the ball to you? What was going through your mind when, when Spencer was throwing the ball to you? Well, when I saw it going up, I was like, I have to come down with this. Like, there's, there's no other option. Like, because if that, if we don't catch that, then clock stops. They're gonna get the ball back with like a minute fifty, 
and then our defense got to go make another stop. And so, um, I don't know, I was just, my mind was just on catching it no matter what happens. Were you nervous? Not really, because, I mean, that's the stuff. You practice it that same route every day, uh, every day. So, I mean, it's just kind of like muscle memory. It's your routine now. So, it's just, I don't know. That's not, it, my, my mind was just on catching it. I wasn't really nervous. What, when you came down with it and you guys are like wrestling for the ball, what was going through your mind? You just knew you had to hang on to it. Yeah, I just knew if I, because I went down with it and then he started ripping at it. So I was like, I just need to still like maintain possession of it. And then uh, the refs came over and uh, I heard them say it was a catch. And I heard them, they just said, stop fighting for it. So I was like, all right, I mean, you can have it now. They already blew the play dead. So that's all that really happened there. And, I mean, having a situation where it was a 50-50 ball and you had to go up and get it and then fight for it on your way down and when you were on the ground, you don't really get those kind of reps in practice. Um, you know, you do go against our, our defense, which is very good, but you don't have those kind of, um, you know, battles to the ground, I feel like, a ton in practice. So having that, you know, was that, was that hard? Was that crazy? I mean, yeah, we don't really – we're not as physical uh... – in season, not like you know, like going to the ground and stuff, but like fall camp and spring, that's what we're doing all the time, really. So, I mean, it's just natural instinct. I mean, you have the ball, you're gonna do everything in your power to not give it up. So, you make the catch, uh, you know, going to victory formation, the game ends, we get the win. Um, the I saw you got picked up mm -hmm. after the game. <laughs> yeah. What was that like mm -hmm. when the guys came and picked you up? I don't even remember. I don't even see who picked me up. I think it was. I know it was one of the linemen, but uh, no. Nah, because right when we uh, needed I saw BP running out. So we celebrated, and then I was just getting mobbed by everybody. And then somebody picked me up, and I was like, all right. Like, I didn't, I didn't really want to be picked up, but I didn't really get a choice in that. So I feel like BP would have tried to pick you up on his own. Yeah. Probably. No, he was hype. After the catch, he got in my face and was, like, yelling. I was like, wow, this is, like, well, that was a pretty cool deal. I mean, that's awesome. Then you go in the locker room, mm -hmm. and obviously everyone knows, you know, Gundy occasionally do these dances. They go viral. It's a whole yeah. thing. Um, you know, you sparked a Gundy dance, so that's mm. pretty. <laughs> that's pretty cool too. Um, you know, walk me through the locker room after the game. What was it like? Well, everybody was just excited for me and just excited that we uh, got the win. You know, I mean, really everybody. I probably it may have been about the whole team just told me good catch and was excited. But no, yeah, it was fun in the locker room. Gundy was trying to. Gundy was trying to get me to dance. I wasn't really going for it at first, but uh, I had to do what I had to do. <laughs> you just had to give in yeah, to, the, to the dancing. That's really what, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> and then, so, Gundy tries to get you to dance, and then in the press conference on Monday, he wasn't super kind about your dancing. Uh, I don't know. I was a little, I was a little shocked by that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't call myself an amazing dancer to start with, but I don't know if Gundy's the one to be passing criticism on dancing. <laughs> um, what was, you know, what's it like just having, obviously after the game, everyone talked about on social media, um, your teammates, coaches talking about how hard you work in practice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just to see all of that pay off and then to see them celebrate you. You're normally celebrating them and supporting them, um, hyping them up. What was it like to have that the roles reversed for you? I mean, it was cool. Um, you know, it was just good to see that my teammates were happy for me, and it was, you know, it was just a, a fun moment in general. JT, what was going through your mind when Kale made that catch? Um, I was like, please get a first down. <laughs> please, that was the first thing, you know, the offense went back out there. And I was like, please, just let's just end this yeah. thing. You know, we're in a place where people don't win a lot, and we're down there. We have a shot to win, and I was like, let's, let's try to win. And then I saw him go up. I, as soon as I th saw him throw it, so I, I figured he was going to catch it. I just knew he was going to catch it, you know. He's a guy that's, like, sure-handed. And I've always been that way since he came, so. What was going through your mind when he blocked the field goal? Uh, well, going into that possession, they had the ball, I think, on the 40. I just had a feeling that we were going to get a stop, no matter how it came. And then when uh, they were kicking the field goal, I knew that they were going to sell out to get it. And then I didn't know he blocked it either. I just saw, I was watching it, and I saw it just kind of knuckle down. And then I think maybe one of the replays on the Jumbotron showed it, and I was like, JT really got up and got that. And I'm not surprised because this dude's vertical. 
is insane. And I was like, it would be him. So, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was happy, you know, but it's like you got to be happy for like a, a second or two, and then you got to get focused. All right, we got to get a first down. We got to try to ice this game. So Yeah, and I feel like, um, you know, he could celebrate a little bit more because, you know, if the offense gets the first down, you don't have to go back in, and they get to just take the knee, and it's great. So um, I feel like you got to celebrate his catch maybe a little bit more <laughs> than that. Um, but, yeah, you talked about it's a tough place to win. You guys came away with the win. Um, the season's just been a little bit different than what people would expect would have expected, but – Still three and zero, still undefeated, um, going into conference play, which is huge. Um, so, just kind of, what's the what's the mindset on the team? What's what's the vibe like with you guys in the, in the locker room and and when you guys take the field? Um, the vibe for, you know, we're we're separated a lot the offense and defense. You know, I know from the defensive side, we're always like, it's on us, let's do it. You know, it's regardless of the circumstances. Whatever you give us, that's what we'll do. That's that's always been our mindset since Coach Nose has been there. So I feel like regardless of what game or if it's conference play, I think just now that this conference play, it's even more of that. So that's just our mindset. And um, is it just kind of different for you knowing that it, it has in the past few weeks come down to the defense? Um, Getting, getting us when getting the stops that are needed. Um, is that kind of tough? Because usually Oklahoma State, historically, in the past few years, has not been in those kind of situations. Um, I think from our, like, from our view, we, we, like, we kind of like challenges. That's what we like, you know. We're here to show, you know, historically, offenses at Oklahoma State are the ones who are high-flying 50, 60 points a game, and the defense is just – don't break, you know, try to get them through the game. But I feel like now we have a defense that can actually change the game on their own. So I feel like from us, and we just like I said, we like those challenges. We like those those kind of games. We just want to win. And for you on the offense, what's kind of the vibe vibe been like at practice? Uh, I mean, in every day we just got to come to work. We uh. You know, we really take it week by week because, you know, every week is a different game plan. It's a different team. we got a scheme for a different type of defense. So, I mean, it's really we just take it week by week and then really lock in on who we're playing, you know, what they do and then what we can do to exploit uh, their defense. But, you know, we always just stress competing and then giving 100% effort every practice because with uh, our practices, with it's basically a short week. Like, you, you can't really have a bad practice. So they really stress that we just got to have come out and then give it all every – are all every single day and then uh, just come to work. And uh, Jason, you'd mentioned earlier that you'd always grew up watching OSU. You wanted to come to Oklahoma State. Um, Kale comes from an OU family. Yeah, Norman. <laughs> Coming from Norman. Um, you know, and then also your grandfather, obviously, being um, Billy Tubbs, the legendary coach at Ben's basketball coach at OU. Um, you chose to come to Oklahoma State. You had two offers coming out um, of school with Northeastern State and Southern Nazarene, and you took the chances to come here and walk on. What drew you to Oklahoma State? Why did you want to come play here? Um, well, I came to some of the camps in the summer, and uh, I really liked the environment. I liked. Uh, I knew Coach Dunn was an amazing coach. And uh, and then I came uh, on a uh, visit. I really enjoyed it. And I always knew I wanted to play at a big-time level at Power 5. Um, school and I feel like OSU is just the fit for me um, and it's relatively close to home and so I can go see my family they can come watch and I mean, it was just a good fit overall and um, you know they probably aren't used to wearing a lot of orange um, mm -hmm. you know we're coming up here to Stillwater all the time yeah. but what's it been like for them for your whole family I know your grandfather had come to games and and um, come up here and visit and was at camps whenever um, before he had passed away in 2020 but um, you know, what's it been like for your family getting to come up and support you up here? I'm, I'm surprised. They they really, like, I knew, I knew they would support me, but they really, like, enjoy. They really like OSU. They really like uh, that I'm here. They like the environment. I mean, all, even, like, my uh, other, like, cousins and uncles and aunts, they all support me. They're all, like, cheering for OSU. They all, they're all for it. So I'm just happy that they support me. Could you imagine that growing up, that that would have been the case? No, I, I couldn't have imagined <laughs> But I'm happy I'm here now, so. And your cousin, Cade, played baseball here. Mm -hmm. You have another cousin who's a cheerleader here. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we're just getting a lot of cabinets like yeah. up here to come to go. Changing the tide a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's it like getting to, you know, be around, uh, you know, family members here that are also involved in sports? That's cool. I mean, uh, a lot of people mistake and think Cade's my brother. And I have to be like, no, nah, he's my cousin. But, but no, nah, it's cool. I mean, just kind of showing like the change of the tide, like my father and uh, my uncle both went to OU, you know, and then. Both of us come to OSU. I mean, it's just kind of a cool deal. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and for you, JT, you always knew you were going to come here. You wanted to come here. Your whole, uh, you know, uh, what's it like now coming in? You're going to start this next game replacing Trey Sterling, who's out with that injury. Um, for you, that's seeing your hard work pay off. You've made all these big plays, but that's been, you know, coming off the bench. You started three to four games. Now you're going to be the guy. You know, is that a finally I'm the guy, or is that like okay, it's time it's time to keep doing what I'm doing, or what's kind of your mindset? I think my mindset is more, you know, just try to make plays for the team. It's never been finally, you know, I, I've the times that I did start, the times that I did come in, I felt like the same way. I don't feel like there's any pressure on me now, or me trying to replace somebody now. I feel like more is just keep doing what I'm doing. And what do you think it's going to be like? Obviously, you've made other starts, but coming off of um, the blocked field goal and coming in on Saturday, playing Kansas State, you're going to have um, your family, I assume, is going to be there to watch. Your mom's always there, always mm -hmm. here um, watching. Uh, do you feel like it's just going to feel like every other game, or do you feel like it's it's kind of my time is now and, and they're excited? What's kind of like your thought process? Um, I, guess, I guess you could say, you know, my time is now, but... Like I said, you know, I've always been like, I feel like I've always been good at, that's part of why I make these plays is because I always felt good at, like, being calm, being relaxed, being chill, just playing the flow of the game. So I don't try to go out there and, and let's go make a play, let's go do something. Just play the flow of the game. You got to remember it's a game, and you, that's what you love. That's why you started playing the game was because you, you love the game. And for you, what's kind of your mindset going into this, um, you know, Kansas State game? Um, the offense is still dealing with injuries at the wide receiver position. Um, but now do you just feel more confident going in, knowing that if, you know, you do get put in this game, uh, you have a shot to make a difference? Or are you kind of just is it the same mindset that you had before? What is, what's kind of your thought process as well? Uh, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I go into every game. Uh, I prepare myself the same way every week. I watch film you know, on my own. I do all the things I need to do because I, like, they're talking about you never know when you're going to go in. So, um, but no, I just feel like I'm with that. I'm just a little more comfortable getting like a, a good amount of uh, in-game snaps. I kind of know how it works and what the flow's like uh, at the college level. So I think I'm just a little more comfortable now and uh, a little more, a little more experienced than I was before. But. And I feel like you're going to be like a fan favorite. <laughs> like I feel like we're gonna go out there. There's gonna be some like Hale Cavanaugh signs. I feel like there might be some fans with some signs. I mean, I think it's gonna be, um, you know, you might get a standing ovation or something when you take the field for warmups. I mean, uh, do you ever think about that feeling walking into Boone, Boone Pickens Stadium and at this point everyone knows your name, everyone knows who you are. Yeah, it's it's kind of different. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's just it's like a polar opposite. Like before, nobody really knows, and then you make one play, and then. Seems like everybody knows. Uh, but, I mean, I just keep the same mindset every week and do the same things to help uh, help us win. So. Have you been getting recognized more on campus? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> What's it and like walking to class? It's just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. It's just like, because now, like, sometimes I'm just like, oh, is that person they might know? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but then some people will come up. I've had a few people come up to me and, like, tell me a good catch and stuff. So, I mean, it's just kind of a cool deal. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I feel like that's cool. I feel like with you, JT, more people have known kind of you've made those big plays, but have you had any uh, interactions on campus or anything where people are like, that block field goal? Well, mostly on social media. Yeah. You know, lots of people saying that on social media because I only have one class on campus, you know. It's still kind of different right now, but that's what it's mostly been is social media, you know, text messages things like that.
Well, thank you guys so much for joining me, and congratulations on a great win at Boise, and good luck on Saturday against Kansas State. Thank you. Thank you. That is Jason Taylor and Kale Cavanis. Thank you for watching the Orange Power Podcast. We will be right back after the break with Cowgirl Soccer head coach Colin Carmichael. Academy Sports and Outdoors is your Nike headquarters. We are proud to offer the best and newest Nike apparel, footwear, and sports equipment. From football to baseball, basketball to soccer, and everything in between, Academy is your place for Nike. For back to school and back to the field, head to toe, your home for Nike is Academy Sports and Outdoors. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. The giant blue whale in central Oklahoma. Musicians in search of that perfect melody. You'll even discover the center of the universe. You'll find stories of lives led, challenges met, and men who raise pigeons. They're all out there waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is follow the road. Phillips 66. Live to the full. I wiped up a mess. Yeah, you... Where is the box? Never mind, I found it! Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. Welcome back to the Orange Power Podcast. I am now joined by Oklahoma State head women's soccer coach Colin Carmichael. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, happy to be here. All right, you guys, start up Big 12 play this week, hosting Baylor on Thursday, Kansas on Sunday. You go into conference play with a 5-3-1 and one record. What have you learned about your team overall throughout the non-conference? Yeah, you know, it's been interesting. We've, we've kind of had a stop-start non-conference season with injuries to, to some key players. Um, so the bad news is we haven't had our best group on the field that much. Uh, the good news on that is some of the younger players have played more minutes, and we've been able to develop them, so hopefully they can make a little bit more of an impact in Big 12 play. So, um, you know, I think we've learned to deal with some adversity. Uh, we've learned to play different positions at times that maybe are a little bit out of our comfort zone. Um, as the coaches, we've had to adapt a little bit as well on how we play and the system we play and the style we play. So, um, you know, it's been interesting, but I think uh, hopefully some of these uh, trials that we've had will uh, make us stronger for uh, Big 12 play. And you mentioned adapting. You guys recently changed up your formations from a 3-4-3 to a 3-5-2. Uh, what went into that, and, and how is that working for you guys? Yeah, part of it was uh, the injuries. You know, um, Olivia Dow, one of our star forwards, uh, Olivia missed basically all summer. And then when she came back, she missed some of pre or all of preseason and the beginning of, of this season. So since she's been back, we've been trying to maximize her ability to play in the attack. And the position she was playing, um, she had to do an awful lot of defensive work. So we wanted to kind of eliminate some of that defensive work so she had more energy for the attack. So that was part of it. Um, we've been without Kim Rodriguez for a long time. And so we've moved Kim to the midfield, again, coming off the injury probably felt like that was a better spot for her than actually playing in the back line. So, you know, the injuries actually kind of made us adapt and play a different system. Um, it's not hugely different. It's just a little tweak. But, uh, we, you know, we're now playing a 3-5-2, so we're playing with two forwards instead of the one target. Um, but the back line looks the same. So some of the injuries have, have been kind of – they've forced our hand a little bit into those changes. But, um, you know, we, we kind of like what we see. And let's talk a little bit about Grace Yoakum. I mean, four goals already on the season. She's got 31 in her career, tied for fourth, all-time scoring uh, for Cowgirls soccer. What's it like having someone like that on your team that you can trust when it comes down, when the game comes down to the line? Phenomenal. Um, she's such a clutch player. A lot of those goals have been game-winning goals as well. So it's not as if she's scoring two and we're winning 5 nothing. You know, she's scoring the winner in a 2-1 game. So, uh, so proud of Grace. Um, she will get that record at some point. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, and the fact that she doesn't play forward, you know, she plays more of a deeper midfield role a lot for us is just testament to how well she attacks. Um, she's a big threat on set plays. She scores headers. She scores penalties, free kicks, and, and also goals in the run of play. So, yeah, the kid's got it all. And um, 
just really thankful she's with us for this year and probably for one more year as well. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think, um, you know, where do you guys feel like you need to improve going into conference play? Yeah, we have to get sharper in front of goal. There's no question. Um, you know, early in the season without some of the key players, we were struggling to create chances. Uh, now we're creating a lot of chances. We're just not finishing a high enough percentage. So, you know, we understand part of that comes with match sharpness and match fitness and practice. And, um, you know, when you're not able to train the team together as a group, it's hard to get that consistency. So we'll continue to work there. Hopefully that'll come good. Um, I think we'll continue to create looks at goal because uh, we have done all season. Uh, if we can just up the percentage now on, on the chances we're creating, I think we'll be in good shape. Where do you think uh, your biggest strengths are? Uh, defensively, we've been pretty solid. Um, early on, we gave up a few more goals than we'd like, but you know, over the last, I think it's four games now, uh, we've only given up two goals. So um, that's, uh, I think most most coaches would take that percentage. Um, so defensively, we feel pretty good. Um, and then I think, like I said, just if we can be a little bit more clinical in the attack, um, that could be once those two things come together. Hopefully, for conference play, we'll we'll, we'll make a run. And, you know, obviously you'll get some bigger crowds coming to MPS during conference play, but what have the crowds been like? What's it been like having fans back at MPS? Yeah, we love it. You know, last year we had fans, but it was limited uh, with uh, the COVID restrictions. So, yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, usually our Thursday night game's a little bit higher attended than Sunday afternoon, uh, but the A&M game on Sunday afternoon was fantastic. They had a pretty good crowd of, of A&M fans too, so we love playing there. And even when the crowd's not huge, uh, the way the, the stadium's constructed, it feels better bigger because it's very loud um so yeah our kids love playing there and i know as we roll into conference play hopefully we'll keep winning because i know fans like to come watch us win uh but if we do that i think the fans will show up and uh, we're excited for thursday um opening up with baylor i think it'll be a big crowd and it's finally kind of cooling down at least this morning <laughs> yeah. it was cooling down a yeah. little bit so we're getting some soccer weather in which is going to be uh, a big plus too so uh let's talk a little bit about the conference realignment the big 12 recently added four new schools in ucf byu houston and cincinnati what do those schools bring to the conference soccer wise well it's a huge upgrade for us you know um I know losing Texas and OU from a football and a revenue perspective is huge for the league, and hopefully, you know, these additions will help offset some of that. But looking at it purely from our perspective, from soccer, you know, we're losing Texas and OU. I don't think either of them have won the league in about 10 years. In fact, OU's never won it. So, um, we'll you say that again. OU have never <laughs> won the Big 12 championship, regular season or conference tournament. Uh, and Texas haven't won it since uh, their coach came on board about eight years ago. So, um, you know, they've had good teams, but, you know, they haven't been challenging at the top of our league. Um, BYU will come in and challenge immediately at the top of our league. They are, it's kind of like when we added West Virginia. They are a national power uh, top 10, top 15, top 20 every year. So that's a huge upgrade. And then UCF are very good. Um, you know, we played a home and home with them a couple of years ago and we lost both games in overtime and they were great games. Um, and they make the NSA tournament just about every year. So those two specifically, if you just replaced Texas and OU with BYU and UCF, there's no question that's a big upgrade for us. Houston are building, they're getting better. They've actually had some good results this year. And Cincinnati are always very competitive in their league. So yeah, I think soccer wise, we're excited. It's going to be a really big challenge for us but it's one we're looking forward to that's awesome and let's change the topic not away from soccer but um to possibly the greatest show ever created <laughs> in my opinion uh ted lasso yeah. so i've tried to get you to watch ted lasso right last year i was telling you about it and then you finally listened to me yeah. and now you're more caught up than i am. It, it, it was a little peer pressure going on i felt it but i, I finally listened right and got it done <laughs> and what do you think of the show and especially your viewpoint as a soccer coach yeah it's awesome you know um you know, growing up in Scotland uh, and just being a huge fan of, of British, English, Scottish soccer, um, it, it really hits close to home. And also understanding the different mentality of U.S. football coaches uh, from the Midwest and seeing those guys uh, and being around a lot of those guys. It's hilarious to me to see that translate and try to blend with the British view of soccer. Uh, so it really hits close to home to me and, and some of the some of the things, you know, some of the characters on the team and the players, they, they've nailed it. I mean, they've nailed the locker room. And uh, I, I just think it's hilarious watching him interact, you know, Ted Lasso and his coaches interact with like the British coaches, players and the fans at the pub. And, you know, they're just, 
it, they're just so different in their viewpoint. It just makes me laugh. So, yeah, it's awesome. And you were mentioning that um, earlier before we started recording that uh, usually on teams out there, there's quite a few Jamie Tarts, yeah. not just one Jamie Tart. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. You know, spending a lot of time, like I, I spent a year in England playing after uh, high school before I went to college. And, um, yeah, I, I was saying I hope I was never viewed as Jamie Tart, <laughs> the selfish, you know, pretty boy, <laughs> not interested in the team concept. But there was a... Uh, there, there's always a couple on every team, but even even playing in the States, you know, there's always a couple. They're more worried about how they look on TV and uh, if they got their stats as opposed to winning the game. So, yeah, that character cracks me up. But he's actually improving, right? He's, he's coming around and becoming a better dude. Yeah, so. which is awesome. So yeah. we, like, we love to see that. Yeah. But do you feel like... Um, is the soccer pretty realistic? Is everything with the soccer, you feel like as a coach, that they did a pretty good job with that? Yeah, I think the, the atmosphere and everything around the games is, you know, some of the, the technique when you watch those actors strike the soccer ball, it's kind of funny because you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's not a good shot or that's not a good corner <laughs> kick. But the actual uh, uh, interaction of the players and the coaches and the way they speak and the fans and all the chants and everything, that part's awesome. <laughs> I feel like, uh, what would it be like if Mike Gundy came and tried to coach soccer? I feel like maybe we should try that. <laughs> I think I, I think coach should come out and work with our team for a couple of days. I would love it, and, uh, and I do not want Mike's job. I do not want to go coach those guys because I would fail miserably. But uh, it would be hilarious. It would be a very Ted Lasso like introduction, I think, to, to a different sport. Yeah, I mean, he's got the dancing locker room dancing down like Ted Lasso did. It's first, you know, that's what he was known for here. Exactly, and uh, um, yeah, he would definitely beat me in that aspect of it for sure, hundred percent. You don't dance in the locker room after big wins? I don't dance, period. It's not good. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that, Le least of all the players. <laughs> How do you celebrate with the girls when, when you have a big win? Oh, uh, we just, you know, there's a lot of music and yelling and stuff in the locker room, but nah, not, not so much coaches dance, and I'll leave that to the players. <laughs> Awesome. Well, hopefully there will be a lot of celebrations in the locker room this upcoming season or for the upcoming Big 12 season, I should say. Um, Oklahoma State kicks off the Big 12 season this Thursday against Baylor at 7 o'clock at MPS and then hosting Kansas Sunday at 1. Thank you so much for joining me, Coach. And again, best of luck this conference season. Thank you guys for listening and watching the Orange Power Podcast. We'll be right back here next week. Be sure to wear orange and go Pokes.